right, welcome back, and this is what we've got. We've got a total of 72 threads, uh, 36 cores, and dual socket. So we can see that all the cores are lit up. 96 gigs of RAM, sure. And we're running the 3090. This is the first video that I've actually featured the 3090. It seems to be running well. All right, let's get some of the benchmarks out of the way. Okay, before we go into the actual footage of the benchmark, I'll try and save as much time as possible just by going over it very quickly. So this is with TimeSpy hyper-threading on, TimeSpy Extreme hyper-threading on, and then we move to hyper-threading off. So these are some of the differences in score. So I'll put this in the under the description in the video so you, you can have a look at it if you want to. Nothing really out of the ordinary. I did manage to do some 8K filming. Unfortunately, I cannot record 8K using the well OBS, so I don't have an 8K capture card. So unfortunately, it's some really janky just recording with the mobile. So it'll be a very small part at the end of the video with just some of the recordings. But Crisis the original. So if you plan on playing it at 8K, it did have a usage of 8 gigabytes on the 3090. So that was quite interesting. But as we get into slightly more modern games, yeah, 8K, it's... This is without ray tracing, and with ray tracing, it was, note, the 3090 VRAM was maxed out, so I'm using 24 gigabytes of VRAM to try and run Crisis, and I was getting less than one frame per second, so if you want to play 8K at, at 8 frames per second, it's certainly a lot better than, a little bit disappointing, but none of these results was with any upscaling technology, so it was all natural, so 8 frames... Control, interesting, but yeah, I mean, Doom Eternal was actually one of the most interesting ones. So you could almost get 60 frames and that was a natural 60 frames a second. So that game is run so well, but I mean, you look at the penalty that you're getting. So it is what it is. Anyway, I'll move on to the rest of the video. Enjoy. Okay, so as we can see for R20, 13,830. Now I have gotten actually above 14,000 before, but the different power setting in the BIOS, I forgot to switch it back to power mode. So I do lose a tiny bit of points. It's not that significant, so we'll let that go. All right, next benchmark, R23. So this will be one of the ones that most of you should be more familiar with. Yeah, all right, let's start. We're gonna watch this together. So no speeding up and now. Now it looks really funny here. I didn't have the same problem with the other one. And obviously what we're competing against, spoiler alert, it's gonna end up on top of the score, but just by how much. Yeah, not really that much actually. It'll be interesting like if some of you have got 13 900K or the 12 900K, I wanna, I'm just curious how close we are what you'd consider a reasonably good score but i am still using 32 uh sorry 36 cores so 72 threads all right next benchmark just for a little bit of fun i've decided to run the cinebench again but this time without hyper threading and this although this was just for a bit of fun but what is interesting is you have 14,000, which, which is what i would have got with hyper threading on but without hyper threading i've only lost 3,000 points and again we just see it here without hyper threading on all right Let's actually get some gaming now. We're just gonna run Minecraft, not to run it for a long time. Now the idea of this is what we're gonna actually see. So because Windows, this is the non-server version of Windows. So this is just standard Windows 11. Yeah, if your system uses over 64 threads, this is what happens. So basically it's only using one of the processes. And we can have a quick look at what it's doing frame-wise. Look at that. 72 threads and we're getting 96 gigs of RAM, 12 channels of memory. And we're getting... Oh, look at that. We can almost make 60 frames. Somehow, I don't think so. With the processor how it is, I'm just going to run 3D mark of time spy and then i'm gonna i'm gonna turn hyper threading off and see if it makes any difference this is just a standard 1080p run then we're gonna do the 4k run i'll meet you at the end of the result okay so this is the end result graphics card very unimpressive so that should be getting close to 20,000. cpu definitely unimpressive but guess what running a dual p8124 processor it isn't exactly great for gaming like it i'm sure but i definitely wanted to know and i'm pretty sure some of you guys would want to know as well 
but let's not fret let's go to the extreme definitely not include demo all right let's run okay so we're just under 4k testing the cpu score didn't actually improve so sometimes you do get an advantage but this is with hyper threading on now i'm going to meet you back here we're going to run the same two tests with hyper threading off and we're back so cores 36 logical processors 36 so hyper threading is off and all right let's run those benchmarks again okay so this is the um test with hyper threading off you can see we've got hyper threading off there and what have we got not really much difference okay so the graphics score is there's Again, that should be around 20,000. CPU score, not very good. This was the 1080p run. All right, let's have a look what it is at Time Spy Extreme. Time Spy Extreme. Interesting, I found that the CPU score actually got a higher score. So, alrighty, that's the end of that. I'll be back. I should be there. I'll meet you in the bias. Oh, there we go. We've got 98 me megs around. Oh, 98, yeah. Gigs, not megs, my goodness. Cool. Enable hyper threading, disable, boom. All right, let's really hit the, we don't need it anyway, we've got enough threads. All right, we're back. So just all I did in the BIOS is just turn off hyper threading. So we've got the different display now. Let's fire up Minecraft again and let's see if there's any difference. No, it's incredible. So if you look at the L3 cache, 50 megs. Now you go to the AMD 5800 3D and that's like 94, I think off the top of my head. Look at that, all cores are lit up. That means both nodes going, although I did have to turn hyper threading off for the scheduling sake in Windows 11, but that's fine. So, and the frame rate's actually a bit more consistent. That's interesting. Although it's not great. Look at that, we could reach 60. For those who want to know, I am, yeah, I got full render distance. So I'm rendering out 96 chunks. I'm generally curious as to, okay, 15 frames that we're not, we're not doing great. But you see that RAM, the memory limitation? Ugh. Microsoft. Before the RTX update on Microsoft, yeah, it would use like a massive amount of RAM. You would not believe the amount of RAM. So I was running my 9900K, yes, and it was utilizing 30 gigs, I think, of the total. And I didn't have this frame, weird frame problem. It could be a daytime thing. Let's have a look, quick look, just, okay. We've demonstrated everything that I need to do here. Minecraft, seriously, allocate, like, why? Anyway. All right, all tests going forward. I will not be using hyper-threading. And the reason why is I did show you the Cinebench results. So, well, one, I want the workload to be spread across the two nodes, which is the both, both processes that I'm referencing there. As we saw with the Cinebench, hyper-threading doesn't really have that much of a disadvantage. So en di enabling or disabling, yeah, we're seeing like less than a third difference in terms of peak performance. So let's run Crisis. Okay, we're in Crisis. 4K, let's go. All settings, very high. All right, let's actually play Crisis at 4K. Okay, first look at Crisis. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get the 64-bit version to work. Um, either my trick of disabling the hyper-threading was a no-go, but let's have a look around the village. I'll meet you when there's some... Really? Oh yeah, the joys of 4K gaming. Alrighty, let's just have a look at the water. There's not really much else I want to show in the game. We've gone over everything. Just difference in frame rate. This is at 4K. Alright, let's try a more demanding game. Let's try Cyberpunk. Alright, just give you a rundown of what we're running. Graphics, any assistance with DLS, AMD, or everything's off. And we're running everything full ray tracing. And yes, this frame choppingness isn't by recording, it's happening here as well, so 22 frames a second. Ugh. All right, we turned motion blur off, maybe that was, um, yeah, okay. So using, turning motion blur off really helps um, highlight how horrible the frames are at this sort of uh, rate at least it's clear so we can see the 
jaggery. Graphics, let's just go to disable ray tracing altogether, apply. Should be getting higher than that still. But anyway, this could be just because of the setup any. Thirty frames with a thirty ninety. Oh my goodness! This is at four K though. Let's be fair. All right, that's all I really wanted to show you. We don't need to dwell too much time in here. Next game. All right, this is what we're running. Resolution render, no upsampling or whatnot. I got a node help me. I love that. Alright, we've got a pretty good idea of the frame rate. I wonder, does anybody have a preference? Like, do they prefer to see the frame rate on the bottom or on the top? I'm sure having these overlays is a penalty, but... I'm more used to seeing it on the bottom. I think this is just an adjustment period that I need to go through. Very loyal node. Such a shame. Okay, so as you can see, we're not getting... We're not achieving 60 frames a second despite the 3090. I actually played this game. This is how I was playing the game because I refused to use DLS and I thought, ah, oh, yeah. Ray tracing, 4K, it's not too bad, and that's what I was playing at, about 40 frames a second. You know, 35. Alright, let's just change. No ray tracing, ray tracing off. And as you expect. Not before I do anything, get that node. Alright, uh, basically I don't need to go any more than that. We can see what the frame rates are. Next game. Alright, this is what I'm going to play at. It's just for all those who are interested. I'm going to go for it very quickly. Alright, let's get some actual gameplay happening. Alright, we're going here somewhere nice and familiar. So it gives you an idea where you're running at DLS. 4K, and we're achieving 140 frames a second. Oopsies. Alright, nothing really interesting happening here, but... 150, you know, this is um, natural 4K. Let's turn off the ray tracing. Yeah, we can see a bit of a performance improvement. It's just 200 frames a second, oh man, I've got to tell you. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it here. Okay, basically that's everything that we need to know. Okay, we've got some good frames. Just looking at Cyberpunk, this is Cyberpunk with ray tracing on at 8K. 
And what we're discovering is I've nearly used up all the RAM on the card. In fact, I'm bouncing right off its limit. And I can't even get a frame per second. It's fun though, but let's try for a bit of DLS. Yeah, even so, so what? Alright, next game. In conclusion, this is a great system for what it was designed to do, but in terms of playing games and whatnot, or having some secret advantage, no, definitely not. So this was a poor bang for buck, that's for sure. Would I recommend this system? Definitely not, but it was certainly a lot of fun making this video, so. Okay, now that we had a look at the system all up, I could definitely say it, I would not recommend this. It's definitely a great system if you wanted to do virtualization or actual server load work, but for, in terms of getting Windows 11 to either update without it crashing, it's becoming quite difficult these days. And, and considering the Cinebench benchmarks, you will find that processes like standard desktop processes like you have well, 7950, 5950, and Intel both 13900 and the 12900K are getting pretty close to this. So would I recommend this? No, actually I do use it as a video editing rig a lot of the time. So a lot of my earlier videos, but enable the AV1 encoding, which I've come to really like that system. I'm probably gonna have to buy a 4090 at some stage to appreciate it. But my Intel, because uh, otherwise I would have used my Intel Arc A770 for this, but this system does not allow resizable bar. So there is a bit of a downside to that. But if you liked the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.